Okay, we're ready to install our crank assembly here. This is going to go on the left hand side of the bike. We have our bearing plug which is going to push into the the bottom bracket, the, uh, the pedal assembly where the bearings are. This is going to go in first. We're then going to put this other bearing plug, the one that has the holes where your allen screws screw into. So your allen screw will go through the bearing plug on one side and then they will screw into the bearing plug on the other side and you will tighten it up and that will keep it tight. And then we will put the bearing cages. The bearing cage that has the indentions in it for tightening it. This one here goes on the left side. On the right side you have the one which you will use either a pair of channel locks or a large crescent wrench to tighten up. This bearing cap will go on the right hand side of the bike. Of course your shaft will go in the middle. We will have the crank with the sprocket assembly going on the shaft. The shaft has a key cut out in it. Your sprocket will slide onto it. You will then align the flat with the hole here and your pin will go into the hole. It is ground down here. It, it, it's shaved down here. That part will mate with your shaft and the more you tighten it up the tighter it gets. Here and then you will put your crank arms on each end of the rod. You will put them at uh, put them uh, opposite each other, and then you will mount your pedals onto it. We've got some grease. We want to be sure and grease our bearings pretty good. Uh, you're going to need a hammer. You're going to need a three millimeter Allen wrench. You're going to need a 14 millimeter socket for tightening up the nuts on the end of the shaft that are going to hold your arms in. Let's get on the bike. We're going to install the bearing plug on the left hand side of the bike. This is the one that has the holes drilled into it to accept the allen head screws that are going to go in. They're going to mount flush against it. What I will do is I will take uh, one of the holes and I will make it at uh, the very top of the position it where it where it's uh, straight up give it a tap what you want to do is go ahead and put your screw in and then you want to be sure and get your other bearing plug lined up to where the screws will be straight and will mount directly into the the plug. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit of a love tap. I can feel the screw being pushed out on the other side. What we want to try to do is get the screw to start into the bearing plug on the opposite side. I can feel it starting, so I've got it aligned up uh, pretty straight. Let's go ahead and get the other screw in. I can feel it starting to uh, thread in. Let's get our final screw in. And I can feel that one starting to thread. You don't want to get them tight. You just want to get them just to where you can feel them just start to, uh, to thread in. Now let's go ahead and tap it in nice and slow. I have the bearing plug in all the way. Let's go ahead and snug up our screws. I've got all three screws in fairly snug. We're going to hit it with a hammer a little bit more. I've got just a little bit of a gap left. Here's where you want, you want to get a little bit more aggressive.
I now have it pushed in all the way. Let's go ahead and uh, tighten up the screws here, get them fairly snug. You don't want to get them too tight because they're fairly fine threads. I've got all three of them snug, now I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. What you want to do is get it nice and snug and then tighten it up just a little bit more. I'm going to double check and see if this can go in a little bit more. And we're going to go ahead and tighten it up all the way here. You want to get it fairly snug, but you, you, like I said, this is fairly fine threads. So you don't want to strip it. Let's go ahead and put our shaft through. I've got the bearing cap that has the two indentions here in it. I'm going to put a good amount of grease on the inside. I'm going to take my bearing and work some grease on the bearing. The bearing has a the metal cage here which forces the which has the balls to the outside here. We're going to put it on there on the shaft with the balls on the outside. They're going to rest against the the bearing face here and that's how it's going to ride. For Grinch, let's go ahead and put some grease on the shaft. Let's go ahead and do both sides. Put your shaft through. Like I said, the, the face of the, uh, the bearing there is what's going to go to the inside on both sides. I've got grease in my bearing cup. I'm going to go ahead and push that over. And this one here is the righty tidy. You don't, it's not reversed. And screw that in a bit of the way. Let's go ahead and do the other side. Okay, let's go ahead and put grease on our bearing. Get plenty of grease on the inside. Got plenty of grease on the shaft. Get you a good amount of grease, put it on the inside of your cup, work it all the way around. Install the bearing with the, uh, the the face on the inside. You want the bearings towards the outside, where the bearings will ride against your bearing cap. Okay, we've got uh, grease on the bearing, grease in the bearing cup, grease on the shaft. This side here is reverse threads. Here, so righty loosey, lefty tighty. So I'm turning in a counterclockwise direction. You want to go ahead and get the side here with the flats on the bearing cup. Tighten it up all the way. I've got it snug. I've got it good and tight. Okay, I've got my bearing, my bearing cage, uh, the cap tightened up on the right side of the bike. Let's go ahead and get it tight on here. You want to make sure that there's no play in your shaft, that your shaft doesn't rock side to side or move in and out. I've got it fairly snug here. I don't want to get it too tight because I'll, I'll uh, damage the bearings. The shaft turns freely. Let's go ahead and put our lock nut on. Take a punch or a screwdriver, give it a couple of taps. You want to tighten that lock nut up. You want to make sure that your shaft turns freely and again that there's no play on it. We're ready to put our crank arms on. I go ahead and put a little bit of grease on it because you don't want it rusting up over the years. Let's 
go ahead and start the nut. Get it pushed on. Okay, now I'm gonna work a little bit of grease on the shaft. Just go ahead and get a little bit of grease on it and be sure and get some grease on the flat there on your key. Got a little bit of grease there, all right. We are ready to go ahead and put our sprocket on. You have the flat where it's keyed, you have the hole in the sprocket where your pin is going to go in. You have the machined off portion of the pin. That needs to go against the flat when you assemble it. The machine part is going to rub against the flat, so you need to align it accordingly. Go ahead and put your sprocket on. We can give it a few taps. You don't want to be very aggressive with this. I can see through the hole that I'm pretty well aligned with it. The sprocket may need to turn somewhat, but I think I've got plenty of room in there. Once I drive the pin in, it'll align everything. If you don't have your sprocket pushed in all the way, your pin won't go in. Let's do a test fit on the pin. The pin goes through. We've got plenty of thread sticking out. Go ahead and give it a nice little love tap or two here. Make sure we've got it fully seated. Put your washer on. Thread the nut on. Thread your nut on and let's go ahead and tighten it. Okay, we've got our, our chain on our, our front sprocket here, got the chain on the rear sprocket. We're checking it for fit. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Here, I've got plenty of, uh, I got plenty of room here for my nut to tighten up here. The chain is taut, I'm not gonna have to adjust the chain. Sometimes your front sprocket is gonna be a different size and you'll have to break the chain and either add or remove links or even put a half link in it to where you'll be able to get proper adjustment on your chain. We're good to go on this one. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and see what sort of clearance issues we have to deal with on getting the motor mount set up and get the motor mount in the right position. So let's just go ahead and tighten this up by hand. You want it tight enough just to hold it. You don't need to get it real good and tight. You want to get your rear wheel centered Go ahead and get it good and tight here by hand. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the motor mount and see what uh, what we need to work with on the motor mount. We're going to take into consideration where our rear sprocket is going to be because we need a straight line all the way up from the output of the transmission. Okay, I'm doing a test fit of my of the uh, the kit supplied motor mount, and we have a problem here. We've got a bit of a gap here where the mounting plate mounts to the frame. You either want to shim that up, you don't want to leave it like it is because that means that you're going to have one edge of your, your mounting plate here striking the metal. You're not going to have a good flat fit here where the plate mates against the, the frame. You're, you're going to be more like that because you have a gap and all the stress is going to be on one point. That could eventually lead to cracking or failure. You want your mounting plate to be firmly against your frame from the bottom to the top, have it firmly against it. I have the same issue in the back. In the back here, I have a gap here, and as well, the mounting plate here does not fit firmly against the frame. It's at an angle. I would have all of the uh, stress at one point here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do on this bike here is I'm going to go ahead and weld in a custom mounting plate for the motor.